Today we're here at Stone Soup Recording Studios in Maumee, Ohio. And we're gonna go check it out. So I'm here with Eric Sills from Stone Soup Recording Studios. Thanks so much for, for having us back Great to, to you. your Thanks, beautiful sir. space, man. Thank it's you. Uh, um, This is actually one of our, I would say one of our first major projects. Uh, mm -hmm. We started the, I started the business in 2009 and 2010, we got introduced from uh, your contact at Sweetwater. Mm -hmm. How'd you get started with wanting to build a studio? We were recording in our basement at home and it was, quickly becoming evident that this was going to be kind of become a commercial venture. Yeah. And I bought some books on acoustics and very quickly realized that I needed to get somebody smarter than me to come in and do that part. And that became you. So, yeah. uh, your name was mentioned to me that you were, had started your own firm and he gave me your contact information. I called you up and the rest is history. There we go. This is the, the control room that we, we first stepped into. And, and I, I love the fact that this, this studio is just feels so comfortable and like you just feel like you want to be creative in a space like this. I love the colors you chose. You know, um, everybody's studio looks and feels different. But when you were envisioning this, this uh, control room, like is this what you thought was going to come out? Or? This is, it turned out better than, than I was, and, and most of that's due to your expertise. But uh, the comfort factor was, uh, a, a big a big thing because I wanted to work with musicians playing together and I wanted it to sound good. Yeah. So yeah, the sight lines were important and the sound. Yeah. So we, we did a lot of isolation in these rooms. Like so, these are all you know room within a room where mm -hmm. we have separate studs that are are separating for for vibration control and, and a lot of mass. You know, we have uh, multiple layers of drywall with mass loaded vinyl that mm -hmm. are in into the walls and the ceiling. And uh, so it's really, really quiet from, from room to room and also cuts out any out exterior sounds. Um, but then the interior treatment, you know, there's a lot of custom elements in here. You know, there's, there's some things that, you know, could just be panels that you could, you could purchase, but almost everything was, was, was custom built. We've got, you know, vertical corner traps, uh, huge ones in the front because that's, you know, real estate that you're just not using. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and uh, you know, every small room has low frequency challenges. So the, those are great. Uh, the big ceiling cloud uh, that's a, you know, a good six inches thick of, of absorption plus hung down from the ceiling. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that helps with that first reflection point and floor to ceiling axial modes. Uh, the back wall I just think is, is beautiful. It's uh, um, you know, the wood diffuser built into uh, the base trapping that we have there because it's all filled with insulation, but then these diffusers are, are set into it. And uh, um, just a really nice, uh, just wonderfully uh, sounding room. And, and uh, um, I, I know you've, you've been working in here for 13 years or so, and, and uh, how, how does it uh, translate to the outside world? It translates brilliantly. Um, the addition of the, 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 the great treatment that you laid out mm -hmm. uh, was that, and between that combination of that and the Trinov and the Barefoots, I mean, I haven't done a car check in quite a while. Yeah. I mean, just because I know it's going to work, mm -hmm. which, which is a great time saver. Yeah. I believe this building used to be a filling station at one point. Is that right? This was built in 1957 as a gas station. Oh, wow. um, the one with the dinosaur. Oh, what is that, Sinclair? Sinclair. Yeah, yeah. And uh, somewhere underneath these are giant pools of concrete where there were lifts uh, for uh, working on cars. The, our lobby was where the mom and pop would say the corn nuts, you know, when you're stopping through. <laughs> yeah. um, this was a gas station. When I bought it, a financial advisor had turned it into offices. Mm -hmm. And I talked to you and said, can we use any of the rooms that are there when we bought the building? And you're like, no, we're gonna have to gut that and bring, a, bring it down to the, to yeah. the foundation. So I uh, put a dumpster outside and gutted it back down to zero mm -hmm. and built it back up with your plans. We got the layout with the vocal booth there in the front, so you can see someone that's in there. But then also good sight lines in the live room, and and uh, I think that's it, the layout is is uh, kind of conducive to what you wanted it to be. Exactly. Like I remember you you mentioned you wanted to have good sight lines because you record people all at the same time, mm -hmm. and and I think that we did that here with um, you know using sliding glass door for the, the the doorway into the live room instead of using a traditional swinging door. Yep. The sliding glass doors give great sight lines. Mm -hmm. And 
Um, these are by Soundproof Windows. Yes. Who you you recommended? Yeah. Great. Uh, they're, they're they're great. I mean, you, people don't think that a sliding glass door would be that sound isolating. Sure. So you'll say, okay, you stand on the other side of the door, and we'll close them. And there's a yeah. <laughs> all of a sudden, you can see their mouth moving, and you can't hear them, which is great. And I know that one of the other things that we wanted to do is try to isolate really well, um, because for two reasons, you, you do a lot of live recordings to be able to to have multiple people in the room, um, but then also uh, uh, it's a kind of in a residential area. You know, there's there's neighbors close. Exactly. There's on three sides of this building are houses. Yeah. And yeah, we I, I wanted to have no problems with the neighbors with sound yeah. leaking out or their dog barking or their lawnmower coming in. Mm -hmm. That was a, a really important fundamental. Mm -hmm. And then after that, making the room sound as good as possible. Yeah. This desk uh, was custom built, right? It I, I wanted a control surface um, uh, that I knew would work with several different DAWs. Mm -hmm. And so the Mackie, uh, MCU Pro was what I decided to go with. They've been customized. I've, the displays are all different. I've changed the internals quite a bit. These are modded. But yeah. um, uh, I went to my friend John Tomes, who's a great woodworker, and said, I want to build a desk around this that, so it looks integrated. Sure. And uh, we went back and forth, and I bounced the planes off you, too, to make yeah. sure we weren't screwing up the room acoustically. Yeah, it's great. It's, yeah. yeah, it's a great design, and, and I know that it was also important to, to interact with your wheelchair mm -hmm. uh, so that that wasn't an issue. Um, but, yeah, it's the way it's it's built and everything is just uh, um, you know right at your fingertips. I mean, mm -hmm. I think it turned out great. Maybe you could uh, show everybody a little bit about what you use in here and, and uh, um, kind of some of your favorite pieces. I'm uh, very much a Pro Tools studio. Um, I have used Reaper in the past and I, I still would occasionally, but uh, uh, Pro Tools is what I use pretty much 100% of the time at this point. Very much a hybrid studio in that some of the outboard is analog, but we'll get to that in a minute. Front end mic pre's. Um, what I, the pre I love the most are the Hairball Audio Lola's, 500 series. Uh, got a couple of ribbon, uh, ribbon pre cue. I love ribbon microphones, but most of my ribbon uh, ribbons are active, or I use a cloud lifter with them. And then uh, the Universal Audio LA 610s, what I use for vocals most of the time. And then there's a couple of other pre's in there for different types of sounds. So that's. Pre front end, then goes into Antelope Audio Converters, which go right into Pro Tools HDX. So um, that's the trend off for the monitor controller. A good friend of mine told me when I was starting to build the studio, one thing that would set you apart is if you have a hear a headphone system that will allow the, instru the instrumentalist to be comfortable and hear things, which was rare in this area. So the Hearback system is something that I just upgraded from the old style Hearbacks to the Hearback Pro system, which is a great system. I'm really happy with how that's working so far. Um, control surface, the Mackie MCU Pros, which I've modded quite a bit. The guts of those are quite a bit different from where they were from the factory. Some of the mixing I do is totally in the box. Um, I still love to use a lot of outboard gear. So I like compressors and I like reverbs. Uh, it's not always in style to be a reverb guy, but I love the Bracosti M7 and uh, the Lexicon. Those are my go-to reverbs for pretty much every mix. And then a whole bunch of different flavors of compressors. Uh, the Stam Audio, that's a clone of the original SSL 4000. Uh, the Stam Audio LA-2A. And then a true SSL G Comp, that always is almost always strapped across my drum bus. And uh, the Elysia uh, 500 is pretty much my master bus compressor. And then there's a couple of 500 series, uh, 500 series Pultex. Um, they find their way onto every mix. Uh, these guys are new, I just got these. These are by a company called Handsome Audio. They're tape simulators, uh, the Zulu 500, that I'm, I'm learning how they work right now. That's a great way to get, I don't wanna say old school, that's not really accurate, but the flavor of the soft compression that tape does that people are used to that's a great way to do it without having to deal with hiss these just came out um and i got four of those two of them will usually live across the drum bus and two on the master bus great unit um langston massingale is a great guy to work with he helped me pick those out 
Um, and then another thing I like having is patch bays so I can reroute things from one place to another as necessary. My monitor chain, uh, pretty much, well, not pretty much it is. It, it's coming, I'm coming out of the digital outs on the Orion, the Antelope Audio Orion, and it goes right into the Trinov. And from the Trinov ST2 Pro right to the barefoots, totally digital all the way through. And then the last digital analog conversion is by the DSP and the barefoots. The monitor controller itself is part of the Trinov. It's the La Remote, which that's a great system. Uh, that's just been a game changer for me as far as, as far as mixing goes. The live room, so this project was done in two phases. Uh, we did the first run uh, where we did the control room and the live room uh, and, and a vocal booth. Mm -hmm. And then we added these rooms later. So we'll yep. talk about that in a little bit. Um, but here in this live room, uh, uh, you can probably even tell from my voice on the recording, it's, it's livelier. Uh, because of all the jazz music that you do, it's nice to have uh, a controlled ambience. You know, like it's, it's not overly reverberant, but it also isn't dead either. Um, and that's just a combination of, you know, the nice hardwood floors, but then also we have some Orlex T-Fuser diffusers on the walls and then on the ceiling as well, uh, plus some absorption panels and, and some custom bass traps in the corners. But um, yeah, it's just really nice to be able to probably put things anywhere in this room and it sounds pretty good. The thing that you did, which is so brilliant, was if you close mic stuff, it sounds close mic, it sounds dead. If you back, you can make it sound as live or as dead as you want by mic placement. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. And you've got some mics, just uh, uh, room mics placed in some of these rooms that, um, do, do you uh, use that for? Uh, uh, this was mainly because your isolation is so good that when you're tracking, if you're tracking drums and uh, that's a much uh, higher level and you've got your pre's down, you couldn't hear them talking back to you. Oh, sure. So these mics were mostly listen back mics. Got it. But I just upgraded to the Hearback Pro system, okay. which has uh, uh, intercom mics built into the system oh, nice. so that if somebody wants to talk to me, they can just push the button and it Got shows it. up in there. Got but that's what those, the original intent for those was to be able to hear people yeah. you know, talking okay. back. That makes sense. Um, how many people do you fit in a room like this room here? The most people I have done in here, um, I, I, there's a, a musical theater composer here in the Toledo area named Luke Rosen that I've done some couple of really cool projects with. Mm -hmm. And we did a whole choir okay. in here. Wow. Um, x wide it with a pair of Neumanns, uh, KM184s, and it came out great. Yeah. And that was probably 20 people. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, the air management then is the challenge, you know. Sure. Do, you don't want them to, to you know, uh, get too hot or yeah. too cold. So sure. Uh, uh, but that, but uh, the sound is always. Yeah, we had twenty people in here. I've done a big band recording where we had drums, and this is before the addition. Mm -hmm. Drums, the piano, which happens to have a disc levier system in it, so we could go back and retrack the piano later. Sure. Um, but um, I think that the choir uh, things we did was probably the right, biggest. Yeah, because uh, yeah, before um, the addition, like the the building ended here. Like we yeah. actually had to build on to the entire building yep. to get this this extra. That extra hole in the space. wall where the new sliding glass door that was not there. No, two years ago. Did you ever envision that the addition was going to be necessary, or did you think once you built this place, I'm I'll be good for a while? And I didn't really know at that time um, because of the piano. We have a nine foot concert grand. That bringing in a combination of classical and jazz musicians and some rock musicians too. That, I mean, I, I, I don't want to have that beautiful an instrument with a bunch of other instruments bleeding into it. Sure. So after recording that for a few years, it was like, you know, it would be really nice to be able to get drums in another room. Mm -hmm. And I didn't envision that at first. It was like, this is a cool project and with a lot of the big palatial mansion type studios kind of going under. Don't want to get any bigger than that. Yeah. But adding that on became necessary just because of the amount of jazz we're doing. But it, it doesn't hurt. You never know when you're going to have something that you've tracked. Maybe that's going to be a rough and it turns out to be the final. Sure. So being able to have that isolated at first is is always a benefit for me. But yeah, let's check out the, the addition here. Sure. 
and uh, yeah, quite the hole in the wall. Obviously, we, we've got a lot of, lot of depth here because um, we had to go through the actual exterior of the building, but then build a new room inside of this one because uh, we didn't want to couple them for vibration purposes as well. And uh, when you, we didn't have a ton of room to add on to the space because there's property, the property lines. Line. Yeah, the property lines are there. We got houses uh, on, on some various sizes uh, sides of here. And, and that was another reason to isolate it as good as we wanted it to, yep. because um, we want to make sure that we weren't disturbing anyone in the neighborhood. But this this live room here, you know, it's, it's uh, got really great sight lines with these, these sliding glass doors from, from soundproof windows. Uh, but then we also uh, have sight lines into each of these ISO booths. Mm -hmm. And I think you mentioned you, you called this ISO booth South. Uh, yeah, I call that the South booth and that south one's booth, the North booth. North booth, yeah. And uh, just, you know, smaller rooms to be able to just put uh, any sort of in instrumentalist or a vocalist in, in those spaces while having the drums here that has good communication with not only, you know, the each room and the live room, but your, your control room too. You can see all the way in here. Um, so it, it kind of... You know, some projects you have like this huge open warehouse space and you can make sight lines, whatever you want. Sometimes it's more of a challenge like this space, but it works out. So Most of the time, drums, upright bass will end up in there. Mm -hmm. The piano stays where it is. Um, and if we're using that one, that will be uh, usually a horn, okay, tenor sax, something like that. Sure, sure. Um, and then I, I know when we, we were we were thinking that drums were going to mostly be in here and so we treated the room uh, for that purpose so we've got a combination of of diffusers um, mm -hmm. around the room and uh, you've got uh, these diffusers there from from acoustical fulfillment you've got some wall panels as well uh, for, from from acoustical fulfillment and then these these flex 48s that are that are here on the back wall uh, which uh, right now the shields are not installed but you can uh, add shields if you want to I have the it up shields anymore. close at hand if it's a project where we want a little more livelier drum sound. The guy who designed those was a genius. <laughs> so um, uh, those are great. Yeah. You, you can put the... I, another thing I've, I've done is to put the diffusers on the outer two uh -huh. and leave the, the inner two uncovered. Sure. And, and that's a great combination. Yeah, like when... Uh, so... The person you're talking about is me, but I'm not a genius. But the uh, the uh, when I designed the Flex 48s, it, I just want to give people um, uh, to to have adaptive sound. Like they, it, w given what they're doing um, uh, that day, they could make this room livelier, or more dead. And uh, also, when the shields are in place, you get more bass trapping. Uh, like it really spikes the absorption in the like, 80 to 125 hertz range. So it's great to have right there on the back wall, opposite the glass too, to help break up any flutter echo that might happen. Um, and then some of these these uh, panels on the walls uh, are also the the perforated facing that's underneath it. like this one right here yep. has a, a perforated facing underneath it and uh, what that does is it makes the uh, low frequency absorption about 80% better than a standard panel would be but the high frequency absorption is only half of what it would be as a, as a standard panel so it keeps that that liveliness in the room while controlling the bass. Um, but yeah, it's like, uh, and these these barrel diffusers do a great job as well at that um, absorbing low frequencies because smaller rooms, they just tend to build up with, with more low frequency energy, you have more low frequency problems, and uh, this is a good way to tame everything, yeah. Um, and they, yeah, these ISO booths are, are great because you don't need a ton of space in here. Mm -hmm. um, you also have uh, these these video control monitors. So if you need to be able to have, because uh, each of these booths cannot see into the control room at the mix position, but you can do. Uh, I flip that on and I can see what's going on. Yep. Yeah. And they can, I, I can put a camera in the control room. So if they want to, I don't know why anybody would want to look at me, but we could put a camera in there if they wanted to see what was going on in the control room also. Sure, sure. Yeah, I mean, so you've had the addition here for a couple of years? A couple of years yeah, now. something yeah. like that. And uh, is it something that, that is doing what you, you wanted it Absolutely. to? Absolutely. Yeah, cool. I, I mean, it, it, it makes projects faster also because you're not spending as much time trying to figure out uh, and punch in. You don't have to punch the whole band in. Sure. You can put, I mean, if one guy doesn't like his solo and he wants to fix the last eight bars of the A section, you can punch just that one thing and not have to do the whole band, you know? Well, and I remember when we were doing the layout for the, the original space uh, before the addition, um, 
it was a it's a give and take because we didn't want to make the control room too small to where it wouldn't translate properly but we didn't want to make the live room too 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 small either so we had to like uh, uh, you know, at least make some adjustments. And so there, there's some compromises with that. Plus you have a huge piano. So I'm mm -hmm. sure that uh, once it's in here, uh, yeah. uh, it limits what you can do. And so having this addition and be able to just put it, put people elsewhere is, is awesome. Um, uh, you know, I found that I really like the sound of the piano. Yeah. If it's a, some projects, we will turn the piano sideways mm -hmm. so that the person is sitting here and they have a sight line better to, to all the other musicians. And maybe you can tell me why, being the, the acoustical guy, I love the way it sounds here. Down there, yeah. I use a stereo ribbon a lot of the time, which is a figure eight, okay. figure eight bloom line array. And I, I think the, I get the best sound of the piano when it's in this end of yeah. the room. I could see that too with just the way the, the lid is, is uh, aimed towards the, the rest of the room to where the sound can open up and develop a little bit more versus when you rotate this, you're naturally closer to these walls. You're throwing that energy depending on which direction it is. And you're a lot of times throwing up against glass, you know, of, of where it's at. Uh, but this just, uh, I think, allows it to breathe a little bit more. So yeah, yeah that makes sense. Very cool. Uh, I also have a vocal booth back here in the in the corner, um, which is what you actually see when you look straight through the control room window. And uh, we designed it to have this little bit of a airlock here, but also for storage. For storage. You know, as a studio owner, you know that you never have enough storage. Uh, you always want to have more of it. And so any little room to be able to do that, uh, we try to pr work that into the design. So It's not a huge building. Um, right. I think it's 1,100 square feet total, yeah. which we had to make the best use of the available space. Yeah. Which And that was a great way of doing that. Yeah, for sure. And so, yeah, this vocal booth here, um, you know, it's it's not super large, but I remember uh, when we were um, optimizing the dimensions of the space, just trying to make sure that the dimensions played well with each other, like the length, width, and height. Um, you know, it's you typically want to avoid dimensions that are divisible by the same number or each other. And so you think in prime numbers, and and we came up with this design to. I think to it was five with. seven nine. Yeah, and that's that's a go-to for me. Uh, actually, is is five foot by seven foot by nine foot ends up sounding really, really, really nice. And it's a great, I mean, it's not just vocals we do in here. I do horns a lot in here. Okay, yeah. Um, I do upright bass in there sometimes, um, and a lot of guitar amping. Mm -hmm. If we want to have a guitar player who is okay not being next to their amp, but they want to be in the same room as the piano, we can, I'll use the radial engineering um, as the studio guitar interface system, yeah. and they can be in here and we can run the guitar amp. But the guitar amps sound, everything sounds great in that booth. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a great A lot booth. of it is just dimensions, you know, it's dimensions, treatment, of course, too. But if you start off with good dimensions, you're, you're going to be, gonna work, yeah. yeah, it's, it's going to be easier uh, for sure. But yeah, that's a really, really great uh, uh, option to have, especially if you're ever working with just a vocalist i know you do that sometimes where mm -hmm. they're coming in and singing over tracks or they're overdubbing yeah. yeah yeah so um but man it's yeah this is such a such a nice space it's it's when you walk from room to room as i'm talking you can just hear how different each room sounds as well uh which is is a nice luxury to have as a studio owner to not just have a bunch of one-trick ponies yes. where you're just doing the same thing over and over again yep. yeah so yeah going over here into the lounge um, where the, the front entrance where we first came in, there's there's some uh, tie lines that you put in uh, mm -hmm. for, for this space as well uh, to be able to, to record. I always do that in studios too, is that uh, you know, I've thrown tie lines into a bathroom yep. or into it, 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 trying to future-proof it and make sure that you can be as flexible as possible. You never know. Plus, I mean, you wouldn't want to do something like an acoustic guitar in here because this isn't as isolated from the outside world as the rest of the place. But um, before we did the addition, we would do drums in here. And I consulted with you to add some more treatment yeah. in here to, to kill this room just a little bit more. Yeah. So, um, and this still becomes a recording room if we run over, if we want to do a, uh, something loud, a trumpet. Yep. Or a guitar amp, uh, you know, we can put in here, so. Yeah, and then you got machine room, restroom mm -hmm. like it's just a nice little area to come in and, and uh, before you get get started on things yep. so um, now how often do you actually get people to take a break out here versus just hanging in the control room you know most of the time when I mean if if we're like taking a dinner break mm -hmm. 
we'll we'll do that out here sometimes in there if we're listening yeah. to listening back to takes. Did you anticipate it being as commercially viable as as it's become? I didn't envision it, it would be I would be this busy, but I'm glad I am. Yeah. I mean, uh, at that time it, it could have been a hobby kind of thing, but now we're I'm working with great musicians, you know. Well, I mean, I think it's one of those things too is that when you build a space that is this nice and inviting and comfortable, um, it kind of just attracts that, you know. It's like, uh, I think that when you walk into this place, you just feel like you're ready to be creative. Working with people and making people feel comfortable yeah. um, is a huge part of it. Well, Eric, thanks so much for having us, man. It's, Thank uh, you for coming by, I appreciate it. It's always cool to be here and to see all the things you're doing. Um, I'm just like, blown away by how this studio has grown and, and, and what you've been able to accomplish. So A lot of that's due to you. Um, and I'm, we've been working together for 10 years and I hope it'll be another 10 or 20 after that. Yeah, man, that sounds, sounds great. It. I'll catch you soon. Thanks, Take man. Care. All right.